there's a an entire cottage industry of products out there like oil for pulling through the teeth and tongue scraping things. Are, are you aware of any research that supports the use of such devices? You've obviously talked about brushing the tongue, but any research mm -hmm. that suggests scraping the tongue is efficacious or I don't even understand what oil pulling is, although I've seen the oils and uh, mm -hmm. I don't I don't think I fully understand what the claim is about why oil pulling is beneficial. Are you aware? Oh, no, I, honestly, I've seen, uh, I have no idea. There is no clinical or research evidence that shows that it's good or bad. Uh, I've seen a few studies on the tongue scraping, which is similar with whatever the brush is doing, but I really like much better the brush because I ask the patients to put a little bit of toothpaste because toothpaste is also antibacterial. And then you just brush. It doesn't harm the cells or anything. You just brush the surface. Um, if I had to choose between this toothbrush, brushing the tongue, the tongue scraping, I would say just brush. Um, it's simple and easy. Okay. Is there a difference between the, the types of dental flosses out there? So the two most common that I see, actually, let's say three. One is like kind of the ribbon, you know, it's like a very soft, mm -hmm. almost looks like a Gore-Tex like ribbon. Mm -hmm. um, the other is like kind of like a, a, a you know, a, a, a rope, a miniature rope. And then the third one would be like kind of a miniature rope that's coated in wax. Um, mm -hmm. Are they all basically the same and you just pick the one that is the most comfortable to you? Or do you, do you have a preference for which type of floss a person uses? Well, what I tell my patients, I have like 10 different ones. And what I tell them, which one you're more comfortable using? It's a mechanical the brightening. It's disruption of the biofilm and taking the food away from in between your teeth. So there are people who have perfect teeth, very close together. They might need to use the one that has the wax because they're going to go in and out very quick. And you don't want to uh, harm your gums yeah. trying to pull in something very strong and then it's going to cut yep. the ground. It has to be done very carefully. There are people who have prosthetics or big holes. They are like little brushes that they can put inside. Um, there are people who have like teeth that are connected to each other and they have another type of device that they can go inside the bridge and clean. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You just need to clean. And you can clean. Most people don't floss really most people do. what do what does the literature suggest what percentage of the u.s adult population does floss once a day if i if i tell something i might not be right but i know by the whole population that i've treated it's like half of the people floss or they floss twice a week or something gets stuck they go and floss mm. but if you ask people, do you floss every day? Most people don't floss every day. And another consideration is that floss costs money, right? So you keep, need to keep buying all those supplies and you might not have, the fund might be used for different things. So, but if you think about flossing and brushing, I still think the floss is even more important than brushing. Wow. Because it, it's it's all the research that I did. People can stop brushing and you recover health easily. People stop flossing as the gingivitis. Inflammation comes so quick because the plaque that is in between your teeth, you can never change or clean if you don't have a device. The plaque that is on in your top of the surface of your teeth, you eating, you get an apple, things that have fibers, you somehow, you just clean, you drink water. It, it, the saliva is constant clean in your mouth. The flossing is where they, one thing is the bad bacteria because they lo love, is the anaerobic bacteria that causes most of the systemic health, such cardiovascular disease, diabetes, they're all anaerobic and they're the ones that are hiding there. They hide in the tongue, they hide in between your teeth, they can hide back in your throat. 
as well because they they like those niches that uh, the oxygen don't go. Is a water pick an additional benefit to flossing? Is it at all a substitute? I mean, obviously, um, there are some cases where it's very valuable, kids that have braces, things like that. Um, but how do, how do you incorporate the water pick into your oral care regimen? I, I like it, but I would say it's only if you're not able to use the traditional, the brushing is the best because the water is more, more if you brush, then do the water pick. Don't do just the water pick without brushing because the water pick is that flushing of all the toxins that are in between your teeth and between your gums and all of that, but you cannot do just water pick. It's a benefit, but don't do alone. Any harm or benefit to using toothpicks? This is just a, a personal obsession of mine. I love toothpicks. Mm -hmm. I, um, mm -hmm. It sounds crazy, but when I find toothpicks I like, I buy them in massive mm -hmm. quantities. Mm -hmm. And there's like this one toothpick I got at a steakhouse 10 years ago. And I became so enamored by it that I had to find out where they got it from. And I found the company that made it, but the minimum order was something like 20,000 packages. So I had to buy 20,000 packages of this <laughs> toothpick, which I still have to this day. I love them. Point is, I always mm -hmm. have a toothpick in my mouth. Am I hurting myself? Am I helping myself? What am I doing? I don't think you're hurting yourself. They even had research in the past that they say that it stimulates your gums and things like that. Well, honestly, that's part of what it is. Like uh, th there's a, there's a mm -hmm. use case, which is anytime I have food in my teeth, I love doing it. But what mm -hmm. I've also realized is I love, I find myself massaging my gums with the side of the pick. So I put the toothpick mm -hmm. in and I'm sort of grinding it on my gum mm -hmm. surface and it just feels mm -hmm. so yeah. good to me. Uh, I still floss yeah. every day, so it's not a substitute for yeah. flossing. But That's what I was going to say. Yeah, it's not a substitute. Floss, yeah, I still floss every day. It doesn't do the same job because the floss the, goes you can around wrap it. too. Yeah, then yeah. Go uh, up and down, but it's, it's benign. It's nothing that um, I don't think any any wrong of doing. That's good because I, I have enough mm -hmm. to last me, my children, my children's <laughs> children, and their children for the rest of our <laughs> lives. This is people talk about generational wealth. I don't have generational wealth, but I have generational <laughs> toothpicks. Um, well, um, talking about that, the electric toothbrush, I like it a lot. Too. I was going to ask you about that. Okay. So mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I'm an Oral-B guy. I've tried the Braun mm -hmm. and I've tried the Oral-B. Something about the Braun one bothered me. I don't know if the frequency that it vibrated at resonated too much with my head, but it didn't feel good. Yes. But I love the Oral-B. <laughs> I had the same. Okay. So is, is, <laughs> is one superior? I actually did clinical trials with both. Okay. Um, they equally good. The difference is the technology. One is sonic. So when you're doing that, it's almost you feel the vibration in your head, yeah. right? And the oral B is much more like, it's the mechanical. vibration is much more natural. Yeah. Mechanical. And I love the mechanical because it stimulates your gum. There are people who love doing the other one. Um, it's very fast and cleans very quick. Um, I like the Oral B a lot. Uh, that's the one that I have. Mm -hmm. So, bottom line is they're both efficacious if you can use them both and use the one that you enjoy more. Yes, it is just whatever you're comfortable and whatever you know you're going to clean your mouth. That's what I say. Okay. I've done anything, all types of floss, all types of toothpaste, and and it's a device that is there for you to do your oral hygiene. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com dot com forward slash about 
where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. 